Welcome to another captivating journey with We Are Saintly Saint of the Day series. In this captivating video, we explore another profound Catholic pilgrimage sites around the world to witness the legacy of St. John Chrysostom. Join us as we traverse sacred landscapes, delving into the history, spirituality, and cultural richness that surround this revered saint. Whether you're a devoted pilgrim, a lover of history, or someone yearning for a deeper connection with the saints, this video is your portal to a transformative pilgrimage experience. Let's get started. Where are the relics of St. John Chrysostom located? The relics of beloved St. John Chrysostom have a long and fascinating history intertwined with the devoted reverence of generations of Christians. Although his body is no longer intact, holy relics attributed to this renowned 4th century archbishop and saint can still be found in a few select and sacred locations today. After St. John Chrysostom's death during exile from Constantinople in 407 AD, his remains were secretly moved back to the imperial capital nearly 30 years later. This was to honor him posthumously after such an unjust banishment. His body was solemnly enshrined in the Church of the Holy Apostles around 438 AD, becoming a site of pilgrimage. Centuries later, in 1204 AD, crusaders ransacked Constantinople and the relics of St. John Chrysostom were taken to Rome. Most of his remains were placed in majestic St. Peter's Basilica, while his head was kept in the Cathedral of St. John Lateran. Other smaller relics, such as a hand and bone fragments, were gradually dispersed over the centuries as relics to sites like the Resurrection Catacombs in Moscow and the Skeet of St. John the Baptist on Mount Athos. So today, portions of this beloved saint's physical remains still rest in sacred places ranging from Rome to remote monasteries, continuing to be revered by faithful pilgrims seeking his heavenly prayers. The full story of his relic's journey speaks to the immense and enduring honor St. John Chrysostom has held through the centuries. How can I make a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. John Chrysostom. Making a pilgrimage to connect with a beloved saint is such a special way to deepen your faith. Let's explore some tips for arranging a meaningful Catholic pilgrimage to trace the life of St. John Chrysostom and pray in the very places this holy golden mouth preacher once walked. With some planning and preparation, this can be an absolutely moving experience to inspire you on your own spiritual journey. Here are some ideas to get you started. Decide which sites linked to St. John Chrysostom you'd like to visit. Research key places he lived like Antioch or places where his relics now rest. Look into organized Catholic pilgrimage tours to St. John Chrysostom's sites. These make travel easier. Obtain needed travel documents like passports and visas early. Also arrange transportation and lodging. Study about St. John's life and sermons before the pilgrimage to enrich your perspective. Work with your parish priest for guidance and to connect the pilgrimage to your faith community back home. Prepare spiritually by going to confession, attending extra mass, and praying novenas to St. John before departing. Time to pack your bags. Making travel arrangements to see St. John Chrysostom. Once you've selected the destinations for your pilgrimage to St. John Chrysostom's legacy, it's time to handle logistics. Here are some tips. Book flights well in advance to get the best fares. Researched optimized route options too. Arrange trains or tour buses between multiple sites if traveling alone instead of a group tour. Reserve hotel stays strategically near pilgrimage points of interest to minimize transit time. Verify entry requirements for different countries early and apply for needed visas or permits. Get travel insurance in case of any unexpected delays, cancellations, or emergencies. Consider hiring private guides or drivers with good local knowledge of St. John Chrysostom sites. Create an itinerary and timeline balancing leisurely spiritual sites with other must-see highlights along your route. Pack practically for security, expected weather, and walking long distances. Break in your shoes. With persistence and organization, the practical details will come together to enable an inspiring adventure following in St. John Chrysostom's footsteps. Don't let logistics deter you from a potentially life-changing encounter with this great saint's living legacy. How can praying the prayers of St. John Chrysostom help to make me a saint? Regularly praying the profound and beautiful prayers of St. John Chrysostom can nurture your soul and aid in your journey to sainthood. Here are some ways these prayers help deepen spirituality. They keep your mind and heart centered on key truths surrounding communion, scripture study, and salvation through Christ. 
The request for illumination and discernment trains you to seek God's will above relying on yourself. Seeking forgiveness forms humility. Gratitude for grace prevents taking God's blessings for granted. Frequently praying these timeless words connects you to centuries of faithful believers who found meaning in them. Reciting the same prayers of St. John Chrysostom unites your heart to this saint who inspires your faith. The meditative, poetic words turn your thoughts heavenward throughout the day. They enrich private prayer and prepare the soul for worship and communion. Praying these venerated words softens the soil of the heart for God's transforming grace. Over time, with devotion and sincerity, they can help cultivate holiness, maybe even someday sainthood. How can taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. John Chrysostom help me grow in my faith? Making a pilgrimage to walk in the footsteps of beloved saints like John Chrysostom can be such a profoundly moving way to enrich and deepen your Catholic faith. There is something powerful about praying in the very places where these holy men and women once walked and served God's people centuries ago. Visiting sites linked to St. John Chrysostom's life can help breathe new life into your spirit spiritual journey. As you reflect on his teachings and example at the locations he lived, you may just find inspiration and renewed perspective. Here are some of the beautiful ways a pilgrimage to see St. John Chrysostom could nurture growth in your faith. You can feel a deeper connection to this saint who shaped so much rich theology and tradition still cherished today. His words may come more alive. Standing in ancient cathedrals and churches linked to him makes church history from long ago seem more real and tangible. Seeing the places that nurtured his faith can help you reflect on what shaped and strengthened your own spiritual roots. Praying at sites associated with his relics connects you spiritually with all others who have sought his heavenly intercession at these holy shrines. Retracing his path of service helps you ponder how to better live out faith through action in your own life. Learning the stories of his challenges can inspire perseverance in facing life's trials while still praising God. With openness, reverence, and spiritual preparation, a pilgrimage to trace St. John Chrysostom's living legacy could profoundly deepen your relationship with this beloved saint and with God. Learning about our Catholic saints and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3 to 6, God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17 11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 St. John 1-8 and 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shout outs, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. John Chrysostom after learning about her today? I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that learning about the prayers of St. John Chrysostom has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.